Okay, so the next half of this paper, the question number 21, two laser emit light in a vacuum, one laser emit the red light, another emit the green light. So they have different colors, mean they have different frequencies, which property of the light from the two laser must be different. Definitely they have different frequency. So B is the answer. Next, move to the question number 22. Two particles in a progressive wave are a distance of 10 centimeters apart. The two graph shows the variation with time t of the displacement d of the two particles. What could be represented by the two graphs? Number one, a part. The particle is a longitudinal wave with a compression and nearest refraction separated by 10 meter. Look this point and this point both are at the phase difference of 180 degree and the phase difference is equal to lambda by two and then two particles in a progressive wave are at the distance of 10 centimeter so definitely this lambda by two is equal to 10 so the lambda is equal to 20 centimeter these two particles are at the gap of 10. So look, they are at the angular displacement of 180 degree, mean lambda by two. This lambda by two is 10. So the lambda is 20. There's a particle in the longitudinal wave with the compression and nearest refraction separated by 10 centimeter. This is correct. Look, this is post compression. This is rarefaction. This is compression. So first particle, second particle, from this point to this point, this is the lambda, and from compression to the next rarefaction, this is lambda by two. So they are set, separated by the half wavelength. So this is correct. We check the second one. The particle in the longitudinal wave with the compression rarefaction refracted by the separated of 20, no. Because the particles, are separated by 10 centimeter and the wavelength is 20. So this is not the answer. They are not separated by 20. They are not at the distance of one lambda. They are at the distance of lambda by two. So B is the wrong. Particles are a transverse wave with peak and nearest separated by the trough. No, the peak of the crest and the peak of the trough, both are also separated by lambda by two, not by 20. So this is wrong. And the D is a particle in the transverse wave with two adjacent peaks separated by 10. This is again, so adjacent peaks are at the distance of 20 centimeter, not by 10. So the correct option is A. Now move to this next one. So the question is, a sound wave is detected by a microphone that is connected to a cathode ray oscilloscope. This CRO displays waveform is this. The time-based setting is given 20 microseconds per division. What is the frequency of the wave? Now look at the wave. If the wave starts from this, it ends here. So how many boxes, how many divisions are covered? One, two, three, and more than three. So suppose there are three divisions. One division is 20. So the total time is 20 times three approximately. So it is 60 microsecond. So frequency F is equal to one divided by time period, mean one divided by 60 into 10 power minus six. So 10 power six divided by 60. So after the calculation, the answer is coming to close to 15,000, so B is the answer. And the next question number 24 is, a person stands at the distance, uh, at, the, uh, at the side of the straight railway track, a train moves towards the person and emits sound from its whistle. The person hears the sound of the frequency 1690 and the train approaches him. The person then hears the sound of the frequency, 1500 hertz, as the train moves away from him. The speed of the sound in the air is 340 with the speed of the train. Look, this is the position of the person. First, the train is approaching to the person. So the observed frequency will be 
Vf divided by V minus Vs. And then it's moving away from the observer. Then the observed frequency will be Vf divided by V plus Vs. Now, this portion remains same. So we can write F naught time V minus Vs exactly equal to F naught per V plus Vs. So this is the portion when the train is approaching to the observer and this when it is moving away from the observer. So this is for the approaching and this is going away. But this Vf same, so we can write this. Now after substituting the values, look for the approach, the velocity is 1690 and V is given 340 and Vs required. And this frequency is given 1500. This V is required and this is 340. So after calculation, we can get the frequency, uh, sorry, we can get the velocity after the calculation of this 1690 divided by 1500, 340 minus Vs is equal to V minus 340. So it is 383, multiply this and this, minus 1.13x because this is vx or just write x and this will be then uh, just correct this this is positive sign and then this is x plus 340 now the calculation so 383 minus 340 is equal to x plus 1.13x so it becomes 43 divided by 2.23. And after calculation, the answer is coming close to 20. So A is the option. So I repeat this. This is a formula. When the train is approaching towards the observer and when it's moving away from the observer, this F not different in both V minus Vs will be different due to positive negative sign, but the product of V actual and the frequency has remained same. So on comparison, we will get this equation, then substitute the values. Okay. And the next is, which list shows the electromagnetic wave in order to decreasing frequency? So we have to remember the frequency, the wavelength. So the answer is B. Decreasing frequency mean the increasing wavelength. So the wavelength is increasing in this order. And the next is 26, a pipe of the length L is open at one end, closed at the other end. The loudspeaker is at the open end and emit the sound of the wave. When a stationary wave is formed, there is an empty node at the open end of the pipe. Which wavelength of the sound wave be used to produce a stationary wave? Look, open end has empty node, then the closed end has node. And we have done in the theory that in this pipe, which is closed at one end, open end. So first over time, first loud sound will be when the wavelength is 4L and the second will be when the wavelength is 4L by three and similarly third, 4L by five. So 4L divided by the odd number. So the answer is coming is three. Look, if one node and one anti node, so this is the shape of the sound and this length is equal to lambda by four. So the lambda first time is 4L. So it's not available here. Now, next option, node here, second node here, anti node here. So two nodes and two anti nodes. So this whole length is equal to first node to node lambda by two plus lambda by four. So it becomes length is equal to three lambda by four 
So the lambda is equal to 4L by 3 next time. So this option, uh, just remember this for the closed pipe at the one end. And the next 27, which diagram best shows how the water waves diffract when they pass through the narrow slit, mean the, through the gap and the barrier. So look, this one. This gap is greater than, uh, this uh, wavelength is greater than the gap. So this is not the shape, it must be proper circle. So this is wrong and come to the B. So this wavelength and this gap, yes, is spreading out, so it's possible. And then no, increase of the wavelength not possible and going straight not possible. So the best choice is the B because the wavelength remains same after the refraction. So bending of the wave with the same wavelength. So B is the option. And then the 28 in two source of interference experiment, the light of a single frequency stand on the double slit, the light wave emerging from the slit are coherent. What is meant by coherent? So simple, they must be of the same frequency, mean they have the constant phase difference. So this is the basic definition. They must have the constant phase difference. And then if they have the constant phase difference, they have the same frequency. So B is the correct option. And the next question is, a parallel beam of light consists of the wavelength 420 and 630. The light is incident normally on the diffraction grating. The diffraction maximum for the two wavelengths overlap at the angle of 31, mean the angle for both is same. From the, diffraction, uh, from the direction of the incident light, what could be the line of the separation of the diffraction grating? Look, the formula is, D sine theta is equal to N lambda. So N1, lambda 1, but D same, angle same. For the second, D sine theta is same. And second number and second wavelength. It means these two values are same. Mean the product of N and lambda is same. So the number of the bright spot number of the maxima and the wavelength both are inversely proportional to each other. Now we will calculate the ratio between 420 and three. So the ratio between 420 and three is two ratio three. It mean the ratio between the n will be 3 ratio 2. So the third order of the 420 and the second order of the second wavelength of 630. So we will use the equation then. D sine theta is equal to n lambda. D required sine is 31 degree. Now use any pair, second wavelength. And then the number of the maximum will be two. So two times 630 into 10 power minus nine because it's nano. So D separation will be two times 630 times 10 power minus nine divided by sine of 31 degree. And after calculation, the answer is coming C. So I repeat this, D sine theta for both is same d sine theta n1 lambda 1, d sine theta n2 lambda 2, this portion is same. So both are equal, mean their products are same, products are constant. So n and lambda both are inversely proportional. The ratio between the wavelengths is 2 ratio 3. So their maxima, which are overlapping, will be 3 ratio 2, mean the third order of this wavelength and the second order of this wavelength you can use any pair. So D sine theta and lambda, D sine 31. So if we use the second order, uh, second pair, so its wavelength is 630 and its number is two. After calculation, you will calculate this one. And the next is a positively charged particle P is in electric field as shown. The field lines of the force are evenly spaced and parallel. 
which statement is correct. Uh, moving P a small distance in any direction will not change the electric force on P. So look, this is the electric field. So this side is the positive and this side is the negative. And the A part is moving P in a small distance in any direction will not change the electric force on it. Look, electric force F is equal to EQ. Look, this is uniform electric field. So electric field strength is uniform, it's constant. Charge of the P constant. So the force constant in all direction. So the answer is A. No need to check the other B, C, D because this is the valid answer because the force is constant everywhere because F is equal to EQ, E constant, uniform electric field, charge of the particle constant. So the product EQ constant. So moving P a small distance in any direction will not change the electric force on P, it remains the same. Okay, now move to this next question, 31. A diagram shows two parallel plates P and Q separated by the distance of five millimeter. There is a potential difference of 700 between the plates. What is the magnitude and direction of the electric force, sorry, electric field at the point P? So look, this is zero, this is negative. So the direction is from zero to negative from high potential to the low potential. So zero is greater than the 700. Now we have to calculate this electric field strength. Electric field strength E is equal to V divided by V. So the V is 700 and the separation is five into 10 power minus three. So it is seven, 700 times 1000 divided by five. And after calculation, the answer is coming D from Q to P, 1.4 10 power five. And then, 32, a wedge-shaped metal conductor of the length L varying A wedge-shaped metal conductor of the length L varying width and the uniform thickness is connected to the cell, which graph best shows how the average drift velocity of the electron in the conductor varies with its slope. The current remains same. And I is equal to, we have done that, it is number density N, Q, A, and V. Now the drift velocity, V is equal to I divided by eta Q, A. So V is inversely proportional to area, and the area depends on diameter square, so pi by four diameter square, so we can write V is inversely proportional to diameter square. So the answer is A. And here instead of the diameter, the length is given. So area is decreasing. So it is also decreasing. Yes, so this is a curve answer. So this answer is not possible because it's not increasing uniformly, right? Answer is A. If it's a diameter, then diameter square, but here is the area. So area depending on the length because the diameter is decreasing, uh, sorry, increasing. So it is V inversely proportional to L length because we have to calculate the area. So area is this. Right, so the, because with the length, the area is gradually increasing. So the velocity is decreasing. I think it's understood. Next, number three. The power output of the electric supply is 2.4 kilowatt at the potential difference of 240. The two bars between the supply have a resistance of 0.5 as shown, which what is the power supply to the kettle and what is the potential difference across the kettle, right? So first we have to calculate the power. 
so here this length each has 0.1 so the total resistance is equal to 1 ohm and the power in kilowatt and the potential difference so first we have to calculate the current so power is equal to IV, the power is 2400, divided by voltage is 240. So the current is 10 ampere. So formula V is equal to IR. So I current is 10 and the resistance of the connecting wire is one. So 10 volt voltage is lost across the resistor it means 230 voltage supply to this. So answer is either this or this, but we have to calculate the power here. So the power is equal to IV. So the current is 10 and the voltage is 230. So it is 2.3, mean 2300 watt. Next question is a graph shows this variation with the potential difference V and the current I, which row identifies the component Look, this is a straight line. Straight line for the ohmic conductor. Ohmic conductor means the metallic conductor at constant temperature. So this is a metallic conductor. And then here, when voltage increases, current increases, mean the resistance decreases, this is for the semiconductor. And this Z for the filament lamp because its resistance is gradually in, uh, in, uh, decree, uh, sorry, yes, increasing. Because the temperature increasing, the resistance of the filament increasing. So the answer for this will be this Y is a metallic conductor, Z is a filament lamp, and this X is a semiconductor. So the answer is B, I repeat this. This is ohmic conductor at the constant temperature. This is semiconductor because with the passage of time, its resistance decreases. And this is the filament lamp. Its resistance decreasing because the gradient of this graph is equal to one over resistance because this is I against V graph. So B is the option. Now the next. Number 35, a bar of resistance 9.5 has a diameter of 0 0.820. It is made of the resistivity 4.9, 10 power minus 9. What is the length of the wire? So the formula is R is equal to rho L over A. So resistance multiplied by area divided by rho is the length. Resistance is given 9.55. And the area is pi by 4 diameter square. So 0 0.280 into 10 power minus, two, minus 3 for the meter. And then square because the area is pi r square or pi by 4 diameter square. And divided by resistivity 4.90 into 10 power minus 7. And after the calculation, the answer is coming 1.2 meters. So A is the answer. And then in 36, the cell, con uh, the cell of the constant EMF, but with the internal resistance is connected to a fixed resistor R using a potentiometer, a voltmeter measure the potential difference between the terminal of the cell, which statement explain the change to the reading of the voltmeter as contact Z is moved towards the end of the potentiometer mean this Z is moving in this direction. Okay. Now, when this pointer is here, so these two readings, I mean these two resistance are parallelly added. So the current is divided into two parts. So resistance, increases okay uh, look at this point this portion of the resistance and this both are parallel so in parallel resistance decreases but when this z is connected here 
there is a single resistor in the circuit, which is this, because when the current goes through this resistor, it will pass through this easy path, no current passing through this. So here the resistance decreases in the circuit. Look at this. When these two resistors are in parallel, total resistance is smaller than the single. So the current is pose I. When these two resistors are connected like this. Now the current is coming from this resistor. At this junction, the current will adopt this easy path. There's no current flowing. So the single resistance here, so resistance increases, current decreases. So the voltmeter reading will increase because the current through the cell decreases. Reason? So the answer is C. The reason is the cell has internal resistance. And the first internal resistance R is carrying current I. So the loss of the voltage is IR. And then when the current passing through the internal resistance is I by two, then the small voltage is lost. So definitely the terminal potential of the cell will increase, for example, this is nine EMF. The EMF of the cell is nine volt. For the first current, if two voltages drop, then the terminal potential, I mean the reading of the voltmeter is seven. But when there is a resistor moves down, I mean the Z moves to the X, the loss of the potential is half. That is one. Now the terminal potential is nine minus one, it's eight. So the answer is C, the voltmeter reading mean the terminal potential will increase because the loss of the potential is smaller across the internal resistance because the current to the cell decreases. Now move to question number 37. It's simple. A cell of the EMF E and the negligible internal resistance is connected to the circuit. The circuit has a current I1, I2, I3, and potential V1, V2, and V3, which equation represents a statement of the Kirchhoff first law. And the Kirchhoff first law is sum of the currents entering the junction is equal to sum of the currents leaving the junction. So the current entering the junction is I1, and the leaving are this. So we will write I1, I2 plus I3. So is the answer, simple one. And then, the question number 38. So question is, two resistors are connected in series with six volt power supply. What is the resistance of the volt variable resistor R to give a potential difference of one volt across 12? So here the potential is one and here the potential is five. So potential divided formula Rx over Rx plus Ry multiplied by EMF is equal to Vx. So the Vx is five. So we will write five is equal to R divided by R plus 12 times six. Then it becomes five R plus 10 is equal to six R. So 10 is equal to 1 R. So the answer is so this is R divided by R plus X 6 okay correction here this is not 2 this is 12 so this becomes 60 so 6R minus 5R, R, so it is 60. So answer is 60 kilo ohms. I repeat, Vx is equal to Rx over Rx plus Ry into EMF. 
So Vx means the voltage across the unknown is five, unknown is R divided by R plus 12. This is 12 times EMF is six. So five times this, five R plus 60 is equal to six R. R is equal to this 60. So answer is 60. And the next 39, Uh, <coughs> molecules of the of the magnesium's decay into the nucleus X by emitting a beta particle. The decay is represented by the equation. What are the values of P and Q? So we have to balance the equation. Look, here is 12. So the Q must be 11. This must be 11 then. And this P must be 23 because this is 23, 23 plus zero. So the P is 23 and the Q is 11 because it's a 12. So 11 plus one. So we will write 11 and 23. So the answer is coming C. Okay, the last part is uh, last question is, in beta negative decay, the neutron inside the nucleus changes to proton. Which statement describes the quark composition of the nucleus during this decay? So neutron is converted into proton. Neutron has one up, two down quark. And then proton has two up and one down. It means this quark down is converted into up. So the answer will be the number of the down quark decreases by one. Yes. Which statement describes the quark composition of the nucleus during this decay? Neutron inside the nucleus changes to proton. The one down quark is changing into up so mean. So the answer is the number of the down quark decreases by one. So this is the answer. Look at the number of the down quark increases by one. No, it is converting itself into the up quark. So no. And the number of the down quarks stay the same. No, the number of the up quarks stay the same. No. So A is the answer. So this is the paper.